Hi everybody, I hope you're all doing great. In today's video, I want to show you three of my favorite new effects on the SP404 Mark II. But first, I got a little surprise for you. This year on YouTube has been truly amazing, and it's all thanks to you who have been kind enough to watch these videos or give me a comment or a like once in a while, and also to my amazing partners over there at Perfect Circuit who have supported me and this channel by not only helping me get my hands on some really amazing gear, but also through their affiliate program that helps me sustain this channel every time you buy something from them using the links down below. As a way of saying thank you for watching with all of my heart, I've teamed up with Perfect Circuit to give away a brand spanking new SP404 Mark II that you can win by entering the contest in the link below. This time around, it's only available for people in the US, but hopefully this is only the beginning and I'll try to find ways to show love to my viewers outside of the US as well. Also, if you happen to know anybody who lives in the US who would absolutely lose their shit if they got a new SP404 Mark II for free, then be sure to share this video with them. So I've had the SP4 Mark II for a few months now, and even though the new pattern sequencer and the improved sample chopping is ace, for me, the SP's secret sauce has always been more about the performative effects. And by that, I mean effects that not only sound really good, but they're made to be live tweaked and played around with for instant musical gratification and happy accident production. So number one, the Juno Chorus. Apparently, the chorus on the Juno synths was kind of a pretty big deal, and I've seen it prominently displayed both on the Roland hardware synths as well as on their VST catalog as an essential part of sound design and sonic flavoring. Not being a really big fan of choruses per se, I've never really paid that much attention to it to be honest, and man was I missing out. On the MK2, you get five models to play with, three Junos and two GXs, which sound different enough to be identifiable, but not so much that when you switch models, it'll throw the whole mood out of whack. All of the models give the sound a rich body and an increase of space that's very tastefully done so as not to be overpowering. Even nearing the higher mix levels, I never get the feeling of going really overboard. Now, the JX models have a slight modulation to them, almost like a very slow LFO was giving them a sort of a mild flanger effect. Flanger? Flanger? Not sure, I think I've never said this out loud. Flanger? Flanger. The noise on all of these machines is very soft and not intrusive at all, and even at some of the higher levels, it doesn't get too harsh. The noise on the Juno 12 models is the most interesting one to me, as it sort of has this tremolo that gives it an interesting movement, though at times you might mistake it for someone's water sprinkler just going wild. It's a great addition to the effects library as I find it really useful for beefing up some of the sounds and adding some nice harmonics into the mix. Coming in hot at number two is the cassette emulation effect. Now this one kind of hurts because I do have to admit that one of the main reasons I keep an SP404 around at all times is the famous vinyl effect. It just has a warmth and tweakability that I've struggled to match on other devices or plugins. Well, this new effect has shown me that apparently I have more love for cassettes than I do vinyl. And honestly, it kind of figures because I grew up listening more to my bootleg Nirvana tape than I did to my dad's classical music record collection. I found this effect to be an absolute blast to play around with. The hiss is a bit harsher than the Juno chorus noise that I mentioned earlier, and I try to keep the drive on a short leash. But the wow on the flutter combined with the ability to tweak the tape age is chef's kiss. The catch parameter imitates a tape getting caught and ripping up, which sounds pretty cool, but will evoke some pretty terrifying flashbacks for people of a certain age. There are few childhood memories more heartbreaking than watching your favorite mixtapes guts spill out of the car's cassette deck. Good times. So before heading on to my favorite new effect, I had to at least give a shout out to the scatter effect. I've come to think of it as almost an evolution of the beat repeat, in that it certainly adds the same kind of flavor, but by being a bit more unpredictable and adding a touch of randomness to the stutter, it feels fresh. It's not exactly a new effect, as it's been featured on other synths and group boxes by Roland, but it adds enough variety to make the beat repeat a bit different and original even. Let's just hope it doesn't get used to death as well. Finally, my absolute favorite effect currently on the SP404 Mark II, which I believe came in the last update, 
has got to be the cloud delay. I always thought of myself as a reverb guy, but after this and the Chase Bliss Habit, I've got to say that the experimental delay is where the juicy, sugary, chocolatey, cream-filled center of ethereal musical soundscape is where it's at. On its own, the cloud delay is just chalk-filled with options for you to play around with. You can control the pitch, the delay window, the mix, the feedback, something called cloudy, which I assume is how cloudy your cloud delay is, and, and lo-fi, which is just on or off, doesn't have any levels on its own. As a side note, I do find the lo-fi parameter to be a bit strange to have here, as it's extremely harsh and thin in contrast to the general character of this effect, to the point of being almost unusable, at least for me. So I'm gonna just act like it's not here at all. The cloud delay is the kind of effect that can make you go from wanting a device to absolutely needing a device. It goes extremely well with melodic samples, especially the more mellow kind. And playing around with the pitch and window is the stuff that can get you hooked for hours on end. Just start playing around with the mix knob to smooth out the transitions and you have an effect that can take you from meh into epic levels of absolute soundgasm. I can't say enough good things about it, and it makes the SP4 not only a great sampler, but a true effects processor to run other synths through in my setup, making it one of the most versatile machines in my whole arsenal. Well, that's pretty much it for me today. I hope you entered the contest, and I wish you the best of luck. And if you're looking for a little more SP4 4 Mark II content, how about checking out this video right here? As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video useful or at least entertaining. Have a great week. I'll see you in the next one.